I just want Foot Fungus to give you that vibe of like, it's okay to go off and be weird and get sweaty and be out of my mind for this next two minutes. And then whatever comes on after that, we'll deal with that when it comes. But right now it's like, we on this and this is some other shit. And that's the lane I want to stay in when I'm making music with Ski Mask. <laughs> Okay, baby be calling me Hercules Cause the H on my waist, but this bitch here stand for her mate. Oh, okay, I dad pop me a birthday Cause I heard it help with the pain, but just help my back aches Okay, uh, baby it don't hurt me Let's begin after three, cause a nigga like four play uh, 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 uh. Ski Mask posted a video of him listening to 777. Ski also has a 777 tattoo, so does Key, so do I. And he was posting him listening to it and singing the lyrics. He tweeted, I need new beats, I need hot producers. I responded to the tweet and was just like, can somebody please let this man know I got heat for him. Ski saw it and then he just DM me and he was like, yo, send me some shit. A couple months later, I go to his session in Atlanta, it's a bunch of people working on a beat. So to me, that means Ski walked in, y'all played him some beats, Nothing really hit, now y'all cooking up. So I'm just sitting there like, if someone gives me this aux cord, it is a wrap. Ski's sitting, he's on his phone, whatever. I got the, the cord, I play this beat. This is the first beat I played. If you know him and you've been around him when he's recorded, he laughs a certain way when he gets excited about shit. And he looked at me with this just grimacing ass laugh and was like, oh, I need that. Oh, get it. I had to go to the airport. I left for the airport. I landed a couple hours later and my phone was exploded because he had put up a snippet of the finished version of Foot Fun. <laughs> And so I heard it for the first time on Twitter, just like everybody else. That day, me and Rufio were like about to leave, I think, and we were just finishing up. And I was planning to go see Vince because we were working on FM at the time. And so I was kind of in the mindset of like, all right, I need something real California feeling and just kind of like maybe some 90s type vibe. And Rufio was just like, oh, I got it. And I think the first sound was just this white noise. We had made so many beats recently, me and Rufio, that were either really melodic or really murderous or really whatever. And I was like, let's just try to make some spacey other Neptunes, Timbo, you know what I mean? Something that's just weird. And that sound just kind of set it off. And I think like to get that a little more pop and we just added a kick with it. Patterns appear for me. Like I'll just hear something and I'm like, nah, this pattern works with that. So the kick to me was just obvious. After that, it was just like, okay, how do we make this rhythm more interesting? This tempo lends itself to super rapidy rap to boom, t -t -boom t like that's what people are used to doing as far as patterns at this. Normally people are afraid to do beats at this speed because they always feel like old school hip hop and not in a fun club way. The first perks you hear at all in this are just a little added thing to the kick bounce me and Rufio did. While those are playing in the first section, you, all you have is those little symbols over it. And then after that section, we add basically one more layer of percussion on top of everything. So that's gonna be the hat and the live hat. So then you hear those with the first two percussion noises all stacked. And then the last two that got added, first these little side sticks. And this extra little tambourine loop. So all that perk put together without the other stuff. After we got all those kinds of things together, it had this real bounce to it. It needed 808, it needed the bass, it needed the bump, you need to make the room move. Really the intro has the same 808 that the beat starts with, but everything's filtered. So I kind of wanted it to feel like this moment where you're like, song comes on, you don't really know what's going on, and all of a sudden this bass just hits you. I put a lot of those elements, the first elements of the beat, like 
that white noise, one of the 808s I started using in those rides and I put them all into RC20. Sometimes I might use this just for the reverb, even though I have other reverbs. Sometimes I use it just for the mono down here to make something like really, really mono and right in the center or to make something feel really, really big. You can literally just use this button right here. The point of RC20 in this application was basically just to have the whole beat feel like it's coming out of this little VHS speaker or it's coming out of this like video clip and everything opens up. So the intro feels real thin and feels real. Like you can see I use the EQ right here to chop a lot of the highs and the lows out of it. There's a little wobble on it, which what the wobble does, you can see right here, kind of just shapes everything and detunes it a little bit so it feels kind of old. And you take the filter off. One thing I do in every beat is I really work on my sequence. So even if you only have nine sounds in your beat, 10 sounds in your beat, change shit up so when the rapper is rapping, even if they do one flow the whole way, the way the beats move in and the way the beat drops out and comes back in, keeps the energy up. Foot fungus as a beat is to get a good performance at a ski, that's the point. If I put too much in there trying to flex, it's not gonna do anything for the song. Ski heard this and reacted to it because he could hear himself in it. Once I have the majority of my format, I'll start just doing different sections. In the intro, everything's in that RC20 and it feels real thin. Then the beat comes in right here with this 808. And that 808 is the first time you get any low end. I wanted it to drop another level lower. So we have this intro, then we got this first section, and then, oh my God, I didn't know the floor could come out again. Like, that was the point. So that 808 is the first, like, four, eight bars, and then this 808 comes in right behind it. The way the song is set up, you have this real thin area, then you have this low area, and then you got this real big area, so it's kind of tension and release. The only thing that really differs the main part of his verse from his hook is a little bit of extra percussion. Those are pretty much all the elements, melodic or drum-wise, that go into like the structure of what we need to make a song. And then everything else is just a flourish. I have this thing right here. It's almost like a little radio sound. And that's the transition between a lot of the sections. That little noise right there gives it enough space before the next 808 comes in to make you guess for a sec. And then to tie in with that one, the intro has this shortwave radio. That's over the entire intro, under that little filter thing. So throughout the beat, you got these little radio snippets that happen. I was working on FM for Vince Staples at the time. I was using a lot of radio shit. What can I say? Beyond that, one of my favorite things in this whole beat is one of the smallest, simplest things in it. It's a sensor beat. But to me, the sensor beep is the hardest way to separate two sections because it already just makes you think dirty shit. It makes you think of something hard. It makes you think of something illegal. It makes you think of something bad. Like it makes you draw back in and pay attention. If you're casually listening to this beat or to this song, these little effects are going to be the things that make someone go, oh, what was that? Also, something I do in a lot of beats that to me is really, really effective, also a really small thing is just a swell. Whether it's just a reverse cymbal or an effects noise, something that it tension and release. I guess you could say I learned that from the DJ world when I used to do that kind of production. Right before a big 808 comes in. It just gives you that extra little moment of like, what's gonna happen? Really, from what Ski recorded, I think the only real difference is a couple things that Alex Tume added, who mixed it. Alex is gonna take this to the next level. He's the reason when it goes, it moves around the speaker, you know what I mean? He's the reason when he says, you're it like, gets bigger and it feels crazy, like between me, between Ski and his engineer, between Rufio who worked on the beat with me, between Alex, like it took all of us to put this together and it just ended up sounding like nothing else, which I think is the goal when it comes to Ski. Because 
because so much music now is based on this really rigid, similar trap kind of thing, it's all got very similar sounds and similar patterns in it. When you go listen to an Aaliyah song, the patterns don't feel like anything else. Some of the best stuff I've done this year has been trying to tap into that feeling that I used to get from records in the 2000s when dudes did sloppy drums on MPC, not strict hi-hats and Fruity Loops. It's a different vibe. I just try to capture a little bit of that, but still make it work in context with what the artist is doing. You know what I mean? That's the real bridge. Man, I'm making green eggs and ham, but you know I am. Ski's album had so much amazing music on it, but I think Foot Fungus stuck out because of how weird it was. That's my biggest advice to most producers is if you don't show a little bit of your weirdness, your personality within that, you just as valuable as the next kid on the internet who got 300 beats. You know what I mean? You don't stick out. 